Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the UID super important questions from the start till the end and make sure you watch this video till the end, don't exit in between because you are a hustler and you know that and uh, make sure you have worn headphones before starting make sure you like button subscribe to my channel for more just like this and let's get started and the document link can be found in the uh, description so you can download that okay so um, what is the thing is that we'll tell you 23 topics which we'll be covering and these are topics present after you get over with the uh, topics you have to come back and see if you can answer all of this question that will be the best revision okay so let's get started uh, in the first module what we have is the importance of benefits of good design okay so uh, before that you need to know the definition of UID UID is nothing but a subset of the another sub uh, another class which is called as human computer interface you are interacting with the computer that is called as um, user interface okay and human computer interface if you are interacting it how can you make it more better that is what is called the UID so I write user interface design is a subset of creator study called human computer interface UID deals with the study of how humans interact with computer and make it more better okay after that you have the importance and benefits of good design if there is good design what are the common sense things you have the uh, it is it will cause the uh, um, wastage of time will not happen and you'll have the more effective uh, resources used and uh, it will be reducing the cost and the uh, employee satisfaction will increase and the customer satisfaction will also increase because you'll be uh, producing good designs and it will be easy to handle the errors present in that you can improve it more uh, better way okay that is called as importance and benefits of good design Next, we have the GUI and the direct and indirect manipulation. GUI is nothing but graphical user interface. In that, we have the components as graphics and we'll be using those graphics to interact with the system. That's called as uh, GUI. And direct and indirect manipulation means direct means you are directly interacting with the system. So, four things you have to write there. System is portrayed as an extension of real world. That means whatever the apps are present, it looks like a part of our life, right? It is not something which we uh, like a virtual world. Okay, that is called as uh, portrayed, portrayed as extension of real world. Continuous visibility of objects. Actions are rapid and incremental. It can be easily reversible. These are pretty common sense, right? And indirect manipulation means you are uh, having some agent in between using which you are interacting with the system. Okay, that is called as indirect manipulation. For that, the examples can be pop menus and navigation bars. Moving on, we have the advantages and disadvantages of graphical system. Five five points you have to remember. After that, you have to write in your own words. The first, uh, the five points and five points are very common sense. If it is good advantage, if it is good graphical system, you have faster learning, easier to use, easier to remember, fewer errors, and replace national languages because the icons does not have any language. Everyone can understand. And attractive and useless space. Many else you can write. And disadvantage, complex, can't understand enough. It's not for public use. Lack of experimental test not familiar more research is required and so on okay gui versus web before that you need to know what is the characteristics of gui they can ask that question as well so seven characteristics are there just have to remember this uh, thing you open your laptop and it look very good okay so it is sophisticated visual presentation then there was the icon which you clicked and you opened that you right clicked it so pick and click interaction when you right clicked it it showed some options like open run as like that right that is restricted set of interface options after you click one option the app opened and some background uh, animation came in that an object was dancing in between so visualization and object orientation object was oriented and you'll be using your memory to perform multiple tasks at a time use of recognition memory and concurrent performance of uh, functions then we have then GUI versus web in which we'll be having the comparison as Instagram and Internet Explorer GUI is very nice web is very useless okay user focus is on data and application here it is on information data is trusted and this is unknown here information is sources are trusted here sources are unknown and presentation here it is having the menus control and windows nice presentation here we have only browser and a page to navigate from one place to another place will be using menus and lists here here we'll be using only links response time is faster here security is highly secure here reliability is yes here and the opposites are true for this one that was about the um, uh, GUI versus web. Moving on, we have the principles of UID. We are headphones, and we have to remember these uh, 16 or uh, 17 concepts are there. There's these key points you have to remember. Okay, you have to remember in this way. A uh, yes, six times C is there. A uh, six C D entered and F three times. Please remove, remove, stop. Thank you, thank you. Done. You have to remember in this way. A is aesthetically pleasing. Just uh, go through these words at least three times, and it is nearly impossible that you will not get to know this uh, thing. And D, E, F, F, all these things you already know what is its meaning. I can write known words. Just remember the sentence which I told you. Okay. That was about module one. Let's move to the next module. In that, we have the uh, first question, which is obstacles and pitfalls, along with that five commandments. Okay, obstacles and pitfalls. You have to uh, remember a story in which a man will be going and he took a wrong path. He saw many trees there. He dived into a sea. He went and met a contractor. He gave him a contract, and he also told him to bring the best fishes. 
and he gave him uh, good designer tools then nobody get his start for the first time he took a wrong path his uh, development is chock full of surprises he saw many trees there as a surprise good design requires living in a sea of changes he dived into the sea making contract to ignore the change will never eliminate the need for change contract even if you make mistakes uh, even if you make the best system humanly possible people will still make mistakes even if he gives the best tools he will still uh, fish some um, like not uh, the best fishes and designer needs good tools he gave him good tools okay after this is then what is the pitfalls pitfalls also you have to remember the story while he was coming back he analyzed why he was not a good fisher why because there was no early analysis a focus on design which is uh, neat and glitzy little or no creativity no usability testing no common design team no uh, and poor communication because of these uh, reasons he was not able to fish nicely after that five commandments are there he also have to remember one story commandments what do you uh, what is coming uh, coming to mind is a teacher will give you commands right so uh, here we have the five commandments which is the first one uh, see re remember like this you went to a school a teacher told you to uh, go and uh, join some people who are already working on a project you went there and you gathered some information and you made some uh, project there okay and the project was very uh, uh, better and you integrated everything and you made uh, made the final uh, presentation as well okay so the first thing is gain a complete understanding of the user and their tasks so the first thing is you have to understand what the task is like you went to the project uh, place right in the team then you have to solicit early and ongoing user involvement what you did is you involved the users in that and you made the best system humanly possible and uh, perform rapid prototyping and testing uh, whenever a mistake was made you uh, corrected that mistake and made it more better modify and iterate the design and integrate the design uh, system of all components you took all the tips and uh, tricks and you made it the uh, best project okay then we have human characteristics in considerations in design here i have to remember this uh, things very easy just i uh, have to start from the eyes perception memory sensory storage visual activity four way four wheel and peripheral vision after that information processing mental model mainly seven or eight points are here only then we have the movement control learning skill and individual differences this you can memorize in your own words right and in case they ask about the human considerations in design at that time write about knowledge experience and tasks needed to be performed how well the human should be to perform a task then that was about the human characteristics and considerations in design moving on we have the direct and indirect business uh, method analysis here also very simple common sense direct method includes what face to face interview telephonic interview traditional focus group workshop you will conduct requirements prototyping user interface prototyping user library testing card sorting for websites which card is more better like that will show and ask the user indirect means you're not directly interacting which is like mis intermediary Service you will take paper survey or electronic survey. You'll have some electronic focus group like groups you will be having. You'll be doing marketing and sales. You'll be doing the email thing, support line, user group, competitor analysis by just seeing how is how is uh, competitor doing well. Trade show, other media analysis, system testing. Okay. Moving on, we have the module three, which is very simple module, the easiest module. What is the structure of menus? S S S H C E. What you'll remember? S S S H C E. S means single menu. Which is having just single menu here. Sequential menu, a sequence of menus will be here. Simultaneous menu, many menus will be together. And hierarchical menus, it will be in a form of a hierarchy. Connected menus, all menus will be connected. Even trapping means something will be going on in the background. Okay. Function of menus, there are four functions. Just uh, remember that navigation to a new menu. A menu bar is there. You navigate it to a new menu. That is called as navigation. Then we have the uh, execute and action or the procedure. When you navigate it there, you uh, execute an action or procedure. And some uh, you click something and some information was shown to enter some data and you entered the data. Four points are here only. Navigated to, uh, to the new menu, executed an action, it showed some information, display of information, data parameter input, you entered some data. Okay. Then we have the content of menus. Here also the four things are there. Context, menu title, menu content, and uh, uh, sorry, uh, choice description and completion instructions very easy context title choice description and completion instructions next we have phrasing of the menus in phrasing of the menus you have six things the first four things are same menu title choice description menu instructions and one new thing is their intent indicator okay instead of the uh, previous thing which you had just write intent indicator then we have two things which is keyboard equivalent and keyboard accelerators okay for any of these things if you want more information i've made separate theory video in detail you can watch the particular topic thumbnails are given okay I mean, timestamps are given, and then we have the important question, which is navigating website. Okay. 
in navig navigating a website, the mainly two types of questions can be asked: the guidelines for the website as well as components of the website. Okay, Gu guidelines are very simple. You just have to remember these things. When you scroll, the uh, website will be having some things like links will be coming, number of links that should be present, presenting links, link to avoid. These types of things are to be avoided here. And writing, grouping, ordering, size, spacing, can write any of these about these. What are the guidelines you can make the website more better? And kinds of links within the page on in within the website or in the external website or link maintenance. Okay. And the components are very simple. You just have to uh, memorize the website here. So in the website, you have browser command button. This is called as browser command button. Website navigation bar. This is website navigation bars here. Textual phrases, whatever is the text written here, that is textual phrases. Graphical icon, wherever the, you can see the graphical icon, that's graphical icon. Command buttons, you have some command buttons here, like uh, plus or minus. Okay. So just remember this uh, same website and you can uh, fill the five points and write something about that. Then we have the kind of graphical menus. Totally, uh, you have to remember m triple p itc what will remember m triple p itc m means menu bar p means pull down menu pop-up menu pi menu itc is iconic tier off and cascading menu but the name itself you can understand what it is you just have to write what it is and how can you make it more better like uh, what is the font size and what is the advantage like i can easily access it or it can be found in the same screen all those things have right okay for more information in what the theory video in that i have uh, explained in depth okay menu bar uh here this is the normal menu bar this is the uh, pull down menu bar you just click you'll be getting something here pop-up menu will be like this when you right click it this is called as pop-up menu okay and then we have the cascading menu once you click this again you will click like that something will come that is uh cascading menu tier of menu you will tear off a menu and take it in a separate position then we have the iconic menu where all where all icons will be that is only called iconic menu pi menu will be like in a circle shape and you'll be um, starting from middle and going to any of these options okay Moving on to the module 4, we have the components of Windows super important question. Just remember this uh, diagram here. In this, start from the top left, title bar icon. This is title bar. This is the window sizing icon. This is the whole thing is frame. This is what is button and this is split box. And here we have the scroll bar, then command uh, area. This is called as size grip. Here we have the work area, this status bar, and this is the toolbar. Like that, you have to uh, memorize all of these and just have to um, write about what is or what all these things are like what is title bar icon for just showing what is the title about like that okay then we have the next question which is explain the presentation style three styles are there tile style which is like in this form you'll be having all the things in the same screen overlapping means it will be overlapping like this and last one is cascading here it will be like overlapping but in a tiled form okay what are the different window management scheme four are there single document interface if you are using a single document multiple documents at the same place workbooks will be handling both the single and multiple documents projects will be handling multiple workbooks just the level will be different okay more uh, data will be there here and the least data will be there here in that hierarchy it is arranged explain di different window operations very simple just uh, activate a window open a window resize the window close the window and move the window here and there and make the sizes uh, more um, means change the sizes separate the window or any other option like split the window all those just what are the operations happening that you have tried by common sense moving on we have the uh, write a short note on trackball joystick these all things you already know what it is trackball just like a ball you'll be having you'll be using a hand to make it uh cursor move joystick for the games you'll be using graphic tablet light pen and the screen will be directly interacting by using a finger or any pen which is uh, sensitive and voice by using the voice text to speech and mouse and keyboard we already know what is you can write many things in your own words yeah that was about the module 4 moving on to the module 5 we have the operable controls what does operable control mean those are the controls that permit the entry selection changing or editing of a particular value or uh, cause a command to be performed okay that is called as the operable uh, things you are doing some operations upon it that is only called operable buttons will be used for that there are three types of buttons command buttons like ok cancel help that is used for executing actions toolbar button is just like this it is used for small action like save or pause or play like that okay and symbol button is like this it is like this one okay like minimize okay and then we have the text only or read only here we have the single text or multi-line text box captions should be there to show some information fields should be there to enter some information okay and then we have selection controls in that we have the first radio buttons like this it will be then we have check boxes palettes list box view box drop down uh, or the pop uh, pop-up box then we have the spin boxes slider in the tab spin boxes will be like this these um, two things are called spin boxes this is the slider and these are the tabs all you have to write it what is its function that's all 
then next we have the different uh, prototypes and the tests in ui what are the prototypes means how you can design a uh, uh, prototype for something like how this design should be like that we'll be drawing uh, first like uh, hand sketches or scenarios then you'll be using some interactive uh, paper prototypes we can use programming facades which is nothing but a model and then you have prototype at orient languages for using some languages you'll be designing something and comparison of prototypes you'll be comparing which is the most best okay after doing that we'll be testing it there are many uh, methods for testing guidelines review you'll be sitting together and reviewing the guidelines heuristic evaluation you'll be validating what is better and what is not what are the changes to be made Cognitive walkthroughs, you'll be walkthroughing the entire step from start to end and uh, seeing what are the changes can be made here to make it more better. Think aloud evaluations, you'll be doing changes and you'll be seeing it loud. What are, your, what are your key points? And someone will be noting down and documenting it. Usability test, classic experiment, focus group. Those are just group activities to find out and test what is better and what is not. And finally, choosing a testing method. That's all. Make sure the like button, subscribe to my channel for more days like this. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next.